action, in which you choose a target that's specific to one language. Again, reflexives in Spanish, adjective plus noun in English. Right? It's a way to then work on not only things that might interact, but again, if, if, if it is the case that 70% um, of stuff is, is shared and about 30% is unique, there's always going to be things that are unique to that language that you're going to have to remediate in that language. Right? But again, the target is driving the language. The language isn't driving the target. Or as our strategy would say, address more than one goal in each session. The bottom of the quote said, you might have a stronger interaction perspective and a weaker one. The stronger would say, target the same goal in language A and language B. So work on plurals in Spanish for 10 minutes, do a break, and then work on plurals in English. Right? Again, it's a way to build up that common thread between the two. A uh, weaker maybe interaction is target one goal in language A and a different goal in language B. So targeting ING in English and past tense in Spanish. Okay? So the target is driving which language you're doing and whether you're going to take a stronger or weaker interactionist perspective. Cycles approach or cyclical strategy, you address a number of goals in a cyclical fashion, but only one goal is incorporated at a time. Okay, so this is somewhat different than the horizontal strategy, where you may be working on multiple goals at the same time. Cyclical, usually you work on one. So in terms of uh, how this works with bilinguals, stronger versus weaker interaction, same as vertical, but you rotate not only the targets, but also the languages. So for example, month one, you might work on plural S in language A and present progressive in language B. In month two, you work on present progressive in language A and plural S in language B. And again, the, the time frame here is, um, you, you know, you, you might want to modify. There's, there's nothing, I think, evidentiary about one month or, or two months. This sort of harkens to Hobson Cycles approach where I think most of their work is done in three to sort of six month intervals because it conforms to the university calendar, which some of you may be on, but some of you may not be on. So regardless of one and two, monitor interaction or generalization within and across the two languages because hope is not a strategy. Okay. You'll be being general manager of the Oakland Athletics. During the break or over a beer at the pool, I'll tell you why the Oakland A's are my favorite baseball team. So, we can't hope and pray that generalization is going to take place. Okay? My theory is, if, if we're taking an interactionist perspective, then generalization is going to occur more likely than not because we're leveraging what the kid knows in, in each of the two languages. Monitor the interaction. So monitor skills within each language by uh, determining efficiency, effects, and effectiveness. That is, we need to be sure that when kids change, it's a result of the therapy we're doing and not something else. Uh, hoping. So efficiency, determine how long it took for the client to achieve the goals. So look at number of treatment sessions, for example. Determine how much, how much effort we needed to facilitate change. How many people see typically developing kids on a regular basis? I don't mean for therapy, but I just mean you interact with, you're in, in the presence of typically developing. What's the most amazing thing about typically developing kids? Oh. You've met my nine-year-old. I think the other thing that's amazing is how fast they learn. And I always give the, the example of my nine-year-old who went from 0% correct on R in three weeks to 90%. From zero to ninety in, in three three weeks, and I have the diary to prove it if you ever want to see it. I know, real creepy, huh? But when you're a researcher and you have kids, that's 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 why I have two kids is to, to study the language. Who doesn't? My, what effort did I have to make for her to produce R? Really none. No, I'm serious, none. I was close though. She was she had, I was uh, over six, and I was getting a little worried that she wasn't. But I never I never put her in therapy with me or anybody else. But the amazing thing was I didn't have to do anything to get her to produce R. And that's to me the most amazing thing is about typically wealthy kids. They learn quickly, and they do not need many repetitions to get good at whatever skill it is they're they're learning. 
It's also why my 11 year old can probably text quicker than anybody in this room. Yeah. On one hand. Right. And I am on the other hand and, and texting with, with the other. But it's just so rapid. I think, you know, they're seeing things in a gestalt that, that we simply don't do. So we want to look at how hard did we have to work and how quickly did the kids acquire whatever it is that we're, we're teaching them. Again, it also says something about prognosis and the type of therapy that we want to do as well. Looking at effects, determining if the change was significant. So we need to take data. And I would suggest graphing those data so that you can see the increase, the decrease, the increase, the decrease, and what's happening with each of those features in each of the languages in which we're working. Because again, we want to make sure that kids are getting better because of what we're doing and not some other element that, that we can't control. So taking pre post measures and even using broader measures like asking families or teachers, does the child sound better? Because what happens after We always say that the most important skill a speech pathologist has is flexibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's fine. And we can, we can sort of follow along. Right? I'm just going to pick out my paper so I know what's next. All right. So yeah, we, need to, we need to figure out if, if what we're doing in therapy is the effect and, and not something else. So we need to take baseline data. It goes beyond our testing data. So if, if you're going to work on plurals, you want to make sure that when you start out, the kids' base level of plural stays the same. That is, it's fairly well. Then you start therapy and you start graphing what happens to those data over time, to that skill over time. Right? And then, after you feel like the child has reached some criterion, whether it's 75% or 80%, 90%, whatever criteria you're using, pull back the therapy. Stop the therapy on that particular skill. So if you're working on plurals, for example, what do you expect to happen if you remove therapy? It should stay or well, hopefully that is improved. Because if you stop therapy and it gets better, it ain't your therapy that's done with you. There's something else going on that you don't know about. Actually, what you want to happen is for there to be a slight regression, not back to baseline, but a little bit lower when you remove the therapy, which says it's your therapy that's working. And again, you know, not standing in the corner on in the kid's head for, for six hours a day, which could be the result, right? You don't know. Okay, so take home messages. Determine how the two languages interact. Monitor within language and cross language generalization and interact yourself. And I think you can interact in, in a number of ways. Uh, one, of, one is certainly utilize best practices, right? We're all talking about evidence based practice. But because our evidence base is relatively small in terms of bilinguals, but it's growing, which is fantastic, we also have to use, in Dahlhan's terms, practice-based evidence. That is, we have to take our own data with our own clients and look at the effectiveness of what it is that, that we're doing. That is, you can't wait for um, our studies to be published in the literature to make determinations about the kind of services that you're going to provide. Because the length of time between when we start a research project and it ends up in a journal can be three, four, five, decades long. Which means it may not be out of date, but it may not be current relative to the kinds of kids that you're seeing. So you, in some ways, have to be your own researcher and utilize practice-based evidence to determine the, the 